Hello art friends! Welcome to another episode of Art with Ashley. Um, special shout out to my Oakwood friends. Um, today I'm going to be doing a watercolor painting um, and I wanted to work specifically with um, something that I see every day um, and have watched its progress and you may notice it's next to me here. Um, my amaryllis plant, which has four blooms right now, all on the same stem, which I think is pretty fascinating. Um, so I have decided to do a little rough sketch first, which I'll show you after I set you down here. Um, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, I hope you enjoy. All right, so I just wanted to get you a little bit closer to my workspace here um, so you can kind of see what I'm working on as I'm doing it. Unfortunately, I don't get to see the flower anymore, but um, anyway, so here is the little rough sketch of the flower. It's sort of hard to see, I think, here, but um, that I drew just with a regular 2B pencil, um, I'm sorry, HB pencil. So, you don't necessarily have to do a sketch ahead of time. Um, you're welcome to, you know, jump right in depending on your skill level and comfortability. Um, I myself, do not pretend to be any sort of expert in um, watercolor painting. So I do like to have a little bit of a, a sketch first here. So, um, and I chose Amaryllis because again, it's something that I have in my house right now um, and I have access to, and um, I kind of wanted to capture the beauty before the, the bloom fades away here. Um, I know this is a popular flower around this time of year, especially at Oakwood. We typically plant the bulbs every year in most of the households. Um, but sticking with our, our quarantine theme here and working with the things that are in your surrounding and trying to find the beauty in some of the things that perhaps you've had around for years, or maybe it's just a new flower, um, or something along those lines, but, you know, really taking that time to sit with it, to examine the outline, the different types of colors, you know, and, and I think that doing that really allows us to first relax and second to be grateful for the things that we do have in our lives despite the many challenges that we may be facing during this pandemic um, and practice our watercolor and art skills of course right <laughs> Okay, so I will begin here. I am going to do a light wash of the background. I'm just gonna choose probably a blue color. Um, I am using a very well-loved watercolor palette from Oakwood here. Um, it's a Na NASCO Country School watercolor palette. Um, I really like this palette. It has, it, like I said, it's very well-loved. <laughs> Um, a variety of, of uh, different hues and values um, and I find that I am able to um, get the saturation and the variety of colors that I'm looking for. Again, you can use whatever you have available. Um, actually, before I, just before I started this, I was thinking how neat it would be to um, do this same project but you know three different times perhaps so maybe the first time I would do um, 
you know, this watercolor painting. And then I was thinking that um, I could do, you know, make a copy of the sketch first, of course, and then do a collage, right? Where I would use, you know, specific hues of red and green and white to fill up this area with color. And um, I don't know, maybe I would do one in colored pencil or, um, I'm not sure. Um, possibilities are endless, I suppose, here. <laughs> but something to challenge yourself with if you, you know, if you are a watercolor artist or you are um, very comfortable with a specific medium, it's kind of nice to step outside your comfort zone, um, try something different, and you may find that you like it or you may find that you really appreciate the medium that you normally work with. So I'm also working with something that I have at my house right now, which is just a sketchbook. It is a drawing sketchbook, so it's not necessarily made for watercolor, but um, you know, sometimes you work with what you have. So that is what we're doing. I just grabbed two different brushes. This is a larger one, larger rounded tip one that you can see here, and then just a smaller, smaller brush here too. Well, I do love photorealism and I have done photorealism um, quite a bit in the past. I am not as comfortable with doing that um, in watercolor as I am in graphite or acrylic paint. So um, also with the fluid nature of watercolor, I find I really enjoy the expressive quality of it um, on a spectrum of abstract expressionist and, you know, Mark Rothko minimalist, I would consider myself maybe a Jackson Pollock <laughs> or um, at the very least a uh, a very expressive artist. I apologize if it seems as though I'm rambling a bit in this video today. I was waiting for my four-year-old to go to bed and as soon as she knew, as soon as she came out of the living room and saw that I was set up to create a video, of course, she did not want to go to sleep then. So it is about 10 o'clock PM and I will be honest, I'm quite tired, but I was very excited to make this video for you and quite determined. <laughs> so So I grabbed a little bit of the blue, one of the shades of blue. Um, this looks a little bit like an ultra ultramarine blue. Um, and I am using the lid of the watercolor paint here to sort of as my palette, I guess. Um, and just diluted the blue paint with a little bit of water and that is what I am working with here. Just doing a very light wash, like I said. 
no expectations with how this is going to turn out. Being that this is in my sketchbook, I guess the one downfall of that is that I can't actually um, tape down my paper. So as you can see, it's, it's getting a little bit wrinkled. I don't mind it as much. It's really, really your own preference. I am not expecting to take this out and hang it anywhere. Um, in all likelihood, it'll probably just stay in my sketchbook and will be fun to look at later on. I'm wondering <laughs> how many of you who are artists and, uh, you know, perhaps went to school for art or just, you know, always kept it as a hobby. Um, if you have I guess a miniature library or something full of old sketchbooks that you've kept or um, is that something you've parted with along the way? Um, I think I might still have a sketchbook from when I was in high school or something <laughs> and I know I had several throughout my undergrad and uh, in graduate school, I think I've had at least four or five. Um, so I think I think it's kind of fun to to you know thumb through them on occasion. Um, it's kind of like a yearbook in some ways, you know. You kind of sort of a snapshot into that time in your life when you kind of look back and and see. Oh yeah, I remember I did this drawing when I was you know, on that vacation in the Upper Peninsula or or whatever it may be. <laughs> um, I like to use my sketchbook as more of a visual journal, typically. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what a visual journal is, is it's essentially a sketchbook. You know, it's unlined paper, you know. Um, however, instead of, you know, always doing specific sketches or designating it to just one medium, a visual journal really allows you the freedom to use any kind of medium you would like, as well as text, collage, um, I think I really got more introduced to visual journals while I've been in grad school. Um, we, we do a lot of reflecting and, um, I find it helpful sometimes, um, when I'm creating a piece of art or if I'm reflecting upon something that I, I really enjoy writing as well. Um, so, okay, I could continue picking at this background all night, I'm sure, but I won't. <laughs> okay, so I am going to begin on the flower here. I have a lovely red that I am going to put a little bit on my palette and I'm going to grab some orange too because um, I wish I knew the specific name of this flower but I or I'm sorry of this um, amaryllis but I do not um, but it is sort of it's more of an orange red I would say um, you know, when you're painting, you really want to look for those undertones. Um, you're looking for that dimension and finding those undertones, you know, the lighter versions and the darker. Um, for example, and I know you can't see the flower right here, but um, on the left side where the light is not reflecting as much, there is a much more rich um, color of red. 
and it's quite warm. Um, but as I move towards the light a little bit more, I can see more of a bluer, um, a cooler undertone on this petal. Um, kind of some, some light hints of purple um, throughout there. So um, again, while we have time right now in this pandemic, um, and perhaps aren't doing as many things as we might, um, that's a little bit too dark. It's nice to be able to take that time before we begin a painting or something to really explore what colors and everything might be in or what minuscule details that you miss when you just glance at it and passing every day. I am going very light first. Um, it's important not to go too dark because with watercolor, can't really cover it up and you certainly cannot erase it. So I guess it's a bit more finicky than say an acrylic that you could, or I'm sorry, finicky maybe isn't the correct word, but um, it's less forgiving, I would say, than, than acrylic. I guess I was slightly inspired by um, something I saw on one of the morning shows on television. Um, <laughs> I'm a terrible storyteller sometimes um, because I do not remember the name of the specific project. However, um, it was really neat in that um, this woman who, I think she, maybe she was in the Netherlands or um, I'm not quite sure what country. However, um, she started this Facebook group. I think it's called A View From My Window. And, you know, with everybody sort of staying in their homes and, um, you know, seeing the same scenery every every day and whatever. Um, she created this group thinking that it could be an opportunity for other people around the world to share what their view is from their window um, all over the, you know, all over the world and what the view from their window may look like or um, what different how different their life is, you know. Um, it was really neat. There were, were people who lived in, say, Alaska or um, other very um, heavily animal populated areas and they were sharing their footage of, you know, of the lovely deer or moose or whatever they have um, that come and visit their windows every so often and um, you know, then you would have somebody in, say, New York City who was sharing their, um, you know, a, a much different scene, right? Very industrial and, um, and quite different than, you know, maybe the, the more nature, animal kind of scenery, but how 
they're able to connect on that level um, you know, with different people, everybody's sharing their different views. We're all sort of, you know, we're, we are in this together where some of us have different circumstances and whatnot, but, you know, knowing that this isn't just, you know, in the United States, right, that this is a global pandemic and that there are others who are doing the same things that we are as far as social distancing and, um, you know, staying home and it, it's kind of, comforting I guess sometimes that strength in numbers if you will um there was a woman who said that when her husband's grandfather passed away they inherited this lovely rocking chair and she didn't have anywhere to put it. So it sat out on this sort of covered porch. And when she was thinking about a view from her window, she thought about this specific rocking chair that, you know, has never graced the inside of their home, but had such significance and you know, it wasn't until they had that chair for 20, 30 years or whatever that, you know, having the opportunity to sit down and stare out her window, did she finally appreciate that chair and what it meant, you know, the history behind it. not to make this video too long hopefully we may start working a little bit faster there's this really beautiful light yellow green it's very very pale almost pastel in some ways that's right in the center of this flower i'm really hoping i can capture another reason I thought about you know really focusing on the beauty that we are surrounded with um, and I, I find that very important right now at least in my personal life um, as you know as if a, a global pandemic isn't stressful enough um, our nation itself is in a little bit of unrest at the moment. Um, and, and, you know, you could perhaps argue that it has been for some time. However, um, the attack on Congress last week has left, um, I think many Americans a little bit more shaken up than they, they may have been before. Um, and you know, we, we just went through an entire year of uncertainty and, and unanswered questions. And, um, you 
though we have the vaccine and many of us have received it so far, especially those of us at Oakwood, um, I think, especially it being the time of year it is and what is going on within our nation and in our world, um, I think it's easy to get wrapped up in all of that, you know, to feel the weight of it. Um, and I find a nice way to relax and refocus is sometimes to find the quiet, grab a paintbrush or pencil or whatever you have and try and capture some of that beauty. And perhaps you're not even artsy. Perhaps you're just watching this because it's on channel 900 after <laughs> after an exercise or after something else came on prior to. Um, you can still capture the beauty. You can still sit back and relax and take a deep breath and, you know, really focus on something that, you know, perhaps you've had in your, your life for many years, a lamp, a, you know, an old book, um, a picture, a photo of happier times, um, whatever brings you joy. No promises here, friends. I'm not quite sure if this is turning out how I expected it to. Um, but you know what? I'm not giving up. Because I know if I just... Keep trying. Even if it doesn't look exactly like it does... In front of me. <laughs> At least I know I'll end up with something I like. Or at least at the at the very least I will enjoy the time that I have taken to create it. And my time spent here with you guys. Switching to the small brush. Trying to mix up a different variation of the orange and red. painter so that is why this palette looks the way it does
typically what ends up happening when I do a painting like this, um, you know, I, I use the flower for reference at first, but then I kind of let my imagination take over and I just, you know, kind of follow my gut where I feel if I want to add something, I might, even if it's not exactly how the the actual flower looks. What I try to tell um, the residents or anybody I'm working with really when we're creating something and we're using um, something specific for a reference. So if you're using a photo or if you're using, you know, this plant or some other kind of still life um, and you do intend on displaying it later, the thing is, is you're likely not going to be displaying the painting next to whatever the picture is or whatever your reference is, right? So those who are viewing it really only have your picture to give them an idea of what maybe that is. So um, it reminds me, I guess, in some ways, I had a resident once who told me, Ashley, we don't care <laughs> how you pronounce something. 9.5 times out of 10, we have no idea how to pronounce it either. So whatever you decide <laughs> or however you decide to pronounce it, that is totally fine. I always appreciated that. The other really cool thing about these flowers is, um, and I guess maybe I'm noticing it more now because I have the light reflecting behind it, but it almost has these little veins in it. Um, I think it'd be really neat to do like a, a close-up, zoomed-in photograph of it and then, you know, create a, an abstract painting from that. Okay, I am going to work on some green now. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to start on the inside with this lovely green here. Not really translating how I expected, but I don't hate it, so.
this is really turning out to be quite abstract.
All right, Oakwood friends, Dart friends. I am just about to wrap this up here. This was a very, very quick, well, <laughs> not so quick. <laughs> um, is my first session attempt at this amaryllis flower here. And to be honest with you, I would very much like more time to work on this. Um, we are approaching the 45 minute mark here. Um, and as many of you may know, I really only like to work on, um, I don't like to spend more than an hour working on a piece at a time. Um, a, because y'all don't want to sit here for longer than an hour to watch me paint. <laughs> and B, um, because I find that sometimes after an hour, even if I take a break for 10, 15 minutes or something, even after an hour, or excuse me, after an hour, um, I tend to lose my focus or if I'm frustrated with something, it'll eat at me. <laughs> and sometimes it's best just to step back and take a break. Okay. So my Oakwood friends, this is my abstract, well, semi-abstract, I would say, amaryllis flower. Um, again, it would be a lot of fun if I had a bit more time to work on it. Um, I will pop this up and show you the flower itself here. So just an example, it does not have to look exactly like the flower. Um, and no, this is not how I thought this would turn out um, when I first began, but to be honest, I'm pretty happy with it. So um, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Today, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to putting together another video for you next week. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or drop a comment whatever you like. Thanks.